Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm filming on a beautiful sunny day, which makes me so, so happy. So today's video is actually requested by one of you guys. If you have any ideas for any of my videos, please comment below. The request was a video on how to be more productive. So I'm gonna give you 20 tips to make this year your most productive year yet. So some of these tips are from me and some of these tips I've gotten from research as well. I also want to preface that a lot of the products I'm talking about in this video that can help you be more productive are on my Amazon storefront, which I'll have linked below. So number one is time blocking. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically setting aside a certain amount of time to complete a certain task. So I'm someone who gets anxious pretty easily, so I have to plan out my day from the day before. So basically what I'll do is I'll pull up my notes app and I'll kind of roughly schedule what my day should look like. I'm not too, too strict with it. Like I'm not going to be by the minute or by the second or anything but roughly every hour I'll write down what I should be doing where I should be so like I said I do this on notes but there's so many different ways you can do this there's Google Calendar for example or you can use like a physical planner so I have this one which I actually bought in the past but I haven't used as much as I expected to what I struggled with with this is that I would forget to take it with me when I would go out sometimes and also sometimes my days don't go according to plan and so with notes you can easily just kind of like go back erase it and then rewrite how the day should look but with this one because you do have it written down obviously you could erase it with like a pencil but it's just like not that same smoothness of just having it on your phone erasing anything that needs to be changed and then rewriting how your day should go but I am trying to move a little bit off my phone and spend less time on my phone so this could be a positive way to do that I'm just gonna pull up a page and show you what it looks like so this is the planner i got it from amazon so again this will be on my amazon storefront but basically what you do is you write down the date here it says daily habits so you can write a habit that you're trying to incorporate in that day and then your plan so you have a line basically for every hour and then you can write your goals your to-do list some random important notes but again like i said you can easily just like use your notes app which is what i do and i found that to be the most productive for me you don't have to do it by the hour each person does it differently what you could also do and, and this is something that i do more in the summer when my time schedule is not very strict but what i'll do is i'll section it off into morning afternoon and evening and just kind of have the to-do list of things i want to do for each section of the day so it doesn't really matter the hour as long as I I get these tasks done in that section of the day. Number two is something that is so, so important to me when it comes to being productive, but it's rewarding myself. There's so many different ways to do this, but for me, for example, I need plans, I need to see people, I need to go out. That's how I reward myself after like a long week of homework, of work and school. It's just the way for me to celebrate and feel good and feel like I'm proud of myself and then I can go into the next week motivated again to start working again. I mean, I'm an extrovert, so I love going out, but if you're more of an introvert, you can celebrate by being home or ordering some good food, doing self-care, watching your favorite show, but definitely have some sort of reward in place because when you have a reward, you're more motivated to get through the task because you kind of have a finish line. You have something that you're working towards and I feel like that makes it a lot more doable. The reward can also be shopping. You can take yourself out on a cute solo date. Like there's so many different things you can do. Number three is finding your productive time of day. So I know there's so many videos out there saying if you want to be productive, wake up earlier. And obviously there is truth to that because you feel like you have more time in the day but I, for example, cannot willingly wake up at 6 or 7 a.m. Like more of like a 9 a.m., 10 a.m. girly. But I know my productive times of day. So what I do is actually use that time a lot more wisely. So if I know, for example, that I'm a lot more productive at 11 a.m., then that time is set aside to get my work done. So it really just depends on the person. It's really just about finding the times of day that work for you where you can feel the most productive. If you are trying to wake up earlier, however, this is a tip I have. Get a sunrise clock. Again, this will be on my Amazon storefront. But this helps me so much especially in the winter time when the sun rises so late and it sets so early and there's barely any sunshine during the day this helps my body wake up because it basically starts to light up like a sunrise about 30 minutes before the time that you set your alarm tip number four i think it's called the pomodoro timer but basically what this is is kind of like a timer where you work for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break so i have trouble starting a task that's what i struggle with especially with school sometimes when i have an assignment like an essay that i need to write or something the hardest part is me actually just sitting down and starting once i do i get in the flow of it and it gets done but this timer has helped me so much and basically what you do is you get 25 minutes to just work and then you take a five minute break and then you continue again. And I find that after using this for a while, I actually skip the break because I'm so in the flow of whatever I'm doing, but it just helps with that original like hump of trying to get into the assignment or whatever tasks that you need to do. So an interesting way you can do this is I found this video on YouTube and it's studying with Rory Gilmore. And basically it'll just have like a little video of Rory studying and then the 25 minute timer. And then when that timer is up an alarm will go off and then you get your five minute break. 
So that's what I use and I find that helps me so much when it comes to schoolwork and it really helps me just kind of get into the flow of it and once I'm in it, the timer doesn't even matter anymore. Tip number five is to have something exciting planned for your day ahead. So like I said, I plan out my days, I usually plan it the night before and I like to have something in that schedule that's something that's exciting for me and something that makes me want to get out of bed in the morning. And it can be so simple, it can be like making your favorite breakfast in the morning or your favorite drink. This leads me to number six which is picking an outfit the night before. Sometimes I struggle in the morning just because because I want to look good but I can't think of a good outfit and just that stress pushes me back in the morning and I start my morning a lot later than I need to. So what I usually like to do is to pick my outfit the night before that way I can take my time and plan out a good outfit and when I do that I wake up in the morning so much more motivated because I'm just so excited to wear that outfit. Number seven is a lazy day. I talked about this before I think two videos ago but this is something that I think is so so crucial but basically what a lazy day is you give yourself a day where you are not required to do anything that's work or school related and so that day basically becomes a day of self-care or you can lay in bed rotting all day, you can watch movies, you can eat junk food, and basically just be lazy. And I think when you give yourself that grace and give yourself that time to just relax and not feel guilty about taking time off, it is so much more mindful and you wake up the next day being so much more motivated. And you'll actually make the most out of all the other days of the week because you know you have that dedicated one day where you get to relax, you get to be lazy, and you're not focused on doing anything that you need to get done. Number eight is to visualize your goals. Again, this is something I've talked about so many times, but I think it's so, so important. Making a vision board, putting that vision board as your wallpaper on your phone or your laptop. You can even make like a physical vision board that you put up in your room, but just some sort of way where you visualize your goals. I feel like seeing your goals makes it so much more achievable. So let's say for example, your goal for this year is to do better in school and to get good grades. So what I would do is I would go on Pinterest and make a vision board and I would name it something like academic weapon era. Like I would just really romantic size it and be like I'm starting a new era I'm gonna become an academic weapon and I'm just gonna find a bunch of pictures to put in that board pictures of good grades pictures of people studying at a library at a coffee shop just everything to kind of help visualize the academic weapon aesthetic and make me feel like I can see what I need to do so I will actually go and do the things to achieve this goal number nine is to make your bed in the morning so I actually used to make my bed right when I woke up so that I wouldn't hop back in but then I learned that you're actually supposed to let your bed air out for a little bit in the morning because probably sweating at night and it's just not good to like trap that all in so what i do now is i wake up i let my bed air out and i'll go and do my morning routine i'll do my skincare maybe even make my breakfast and then i'll come back in my room and make my bed then that way i don't end up popping back into bed after i've done my morning routine which i think making your bed is so important not only that but it also makes you feel like you already completed one thing in your day that's something that you can already check off right from the morning number 10 is to get the easiest tasks out of the way first so whether it comes to homework or chores or whatever it is you have to do those easy tasks often take a lot less time and they feel a lot less draining so if you can go and just do that one thing quickly that you need to get done get it out of the way that way you've completed all the easy little things and you just have that one major task to tackle and I feel like it can be a lot easier to tackle that task when you know that there's not a bunch of other things that you need to do as well. Number 11 is the one minute rule. The one minute rule basically means that if you have a task that is doable under one minute, just get up right now and go do it. So if you're watching this video and there's a really quick, easy task that you can get done, pause this video, go and do that task quickly, and then come back. I think this is such an easy rule to apply because we get so overwhelmed easily about all the things we have to do, but when you break it down and look at a lot of the things you have to do, a lot of them are not that daunting once you separate them and a lot of them actually don't take as much time as you think number 12 is to balance your day with work and play so I've kind of alluded to this before but definitely have something in your day that is fun and is exciting so your entire day isn't focused on work I'm referencing school a lot because I am a student so that's what applies to me but if I have a lot of school work to do then I will try to get my school work done again during that time period where I know I'm most productive but I'll schedule time to do something fun for myself as well like painting my nails or reading a book that I've been really wanting to read or watching a movie that I really want to watch or even filming some fun TikToks because I love doing that but just taking some time out of your day for play and doing something that you love and truly enjoy you know that you have some kind of fun activity in your day you'll be more motivated to get the work out of the way so that you can go and do that fun thing that you've been waiting to do this is random and i see this all over tiktok i've never done it before but it's the candle melt trick basically what people do is they light a candle and they'll basically study until the candle melts so i think that could be a good way to motivate yourself is to just kind of have like an external factor kind of like a timer that you can use for how long you should be working for 
Number 14 is to create a fun workspace. If your space is not clean, if it doesn't inspire you, you will not be motivated to sit there and do your work. So what I like to do is make sure that my space is clean all the time. And I like to make it inspiring. I like to make it exciting. I like to make it somewhere where I want to sit and I want to work. You can put up posters. You can put up anything motivational. Like you can put up your favorite quote. You can put fun stickers. Like there's so many different ways to decorate your space, but definitely have that space decorated and inspiring that way that when you sit there to do your work, you're happy to be sitting there. Number 15 is to use calendars. It can be a digital calendar or a physical calendar. I've said this before, but I like physical things. It feels a lot better for me. But once I started using calendars, my life was changed because before that, I was overwhelming my brain all the time trying to remember everything that I needed to get done. And I just feel like that used up a lot of my brain's resources for no reason when that could be used on so many other things. So I have my physical calendar and I will just write down every plan, every assignment, everything that's due. And not just things that are due, but just random things that I want to remember. They're all written down. That way I'm not overwhelmed by trying to remember anything and I can actually use my brain capacity to work on things that need that brain power. Number 16 is to put your phone in phone jail and I know this one sucks. It can be so annoying. You just want to have your phone. Trust me, it does work. If you turn your phone off and you put it in some random drawer, you will forget about it and you will actually go and do the things that you're supposed to do. We all already know this but we are addicted to our phones and because of that we end up procrastinating a lot. We don't get things done. We lose track of time. You can go on TikTok and say that you're going to scroll for 10 minutes and an hour passes by and so I think it's so important to take time away from your phone and just set it aside somewhere where you can't see it. For me when I cannot see my phone I'm not thinking about that text I'm waiting to receive. I'm not thinking about my emails. I'm not thinking about oh I need to text this person back. I'm not thinking about any of that and I'm just solely focused on the thing in front of me. Number 17 is to romanticize your boring tasks. If you have to clean your room, if you just have any boring task that you are not enjoying, find a way to romanticize it. You can play your favorite podcast. You can play a fun playlist of music that you really love that hypes you up. You can play jazzy music in the background. So like for me, sometimes when I need to study, I can't really play music because that's just distracting. But I'll go on YouTube and play some kind of music that helps me focus. So I think it's called lo-fi hip hop music. I hope I'm saying that right. But I feel like that helps me so much because I have fun music in the background. It's nice ambiance and I can focus at the same time. And yeah, whatever task you have to do, just make yourself a main character. So if you're cleaning, make yourself a main character, put your headphones in, listen to some fun music and dance around while you're cleaning. Number 18 is to dress up even when you're at home. So I only have to go to school twice a week because a lot of my classes are actually online and my work is pretty much online too. And so it's very easy for me to be at home and just in my PJs all day, but that is so unmotivating. So I try to actually get ready a couple times a week where I'll do some makeup, I'll put on a random cute outfit. It can literally be loungewear, but just getting out of your PJs and wearing something different, I think actually helps you get out of that mindset of like being lazy, laying in your bed all day, and you actually feel like you're ready for the day and you want to do something. Number 19 is to dedicate your days of the week for different tasks. For example, my Sundays are my cleaning days. So that's when I'll deep clean my room, I'll vacuum, I'll dust, I'll do all the things and then I'll usually reward myself with self-care afterwards. And then Mondays because I am at home, that's usually when I'll like meal prep for the week. And even in terms of school, like the different assignments I have for different classes, all my different readings, I will section those off on different days of the week. And I feel like that helps me stay organized and then I'm not so overwhelmed by all the things I have to do. Like I'm not so worried about about my room being a little bit messy because I know that I have Sunday to kind of deep clean and go through my room. Number 20, again, I kind of alluded to this before, but taking mindful breaks. So what this means is you take an hour, you take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even 10 minutes out of your day to take a mindful break. And what's important about these breaks is that you don't feel guilty for taking them. So my mindful break is usually around three o'clock where I'll make myself some food, I'll put on a show that I really want to watch and I will just relax and I will make sure I don't feel guilty for taking that break because I know it's mindful, I know it's resting my body, resting my mind so that at four o'clock I can actually start working again because we all naturally procrastinate like we're not all working from 9 a.m. until 10 p.m. when we get to bed we are taking those breaks but a lot of the time we're feeling guilty about it we feel like we're procrastinating we'll feel like we're not making use out of our time but if we actually set aside that time and tell ourselves we deserve that time to rest and we are taking a mindful break or we are not required to do anything we just stop feeling guilty about it and we actually enjoy that break and that way we go into the next task feeling relaxed and ready and motivated and the bonus one, so I said 20, but this is going to be 21. So my last tip is to journal or meditate to clear your mind. I personally like to journal. I like to write things down. I like to get out all that information out of my head, out of my brain, and just kind of have my mind feel empty because when I have too many thoughts, too many feelings going on in my mind, I can't focus on anything because there's just so much going on at once. But I find it really productive to at least take five minutes out of my day and just kind of write something down, clear my mind, set my goals for that day, and move on about my day. And especially if I'm angry and I have any negative emotions, 
emotions, I tend to bottle those up sometimes and then they'll eat me up and I can't really focus on anything else because I'm so distracted by my feelings on this one thing. But if I take like even 10 minutes to just pull out my journal and write down everything I'm feeling, I literally feel like I can take a breath. I feel like everything that has been in my mind is just cleared. There's also meditating, so there's so many different meditations online that you can even find on YouTube, but just sitting down for five to 10 minutes, focusing on your breathing, relaxing, clearing your mind, I feel like can be so, so important. So those are my 21 tips on how to be more productive this year. I know everyone wants to make this year your best year yet, and there's so many different ways you can do that. So I actually have videos linked down below on how to romanticize 2024 and how to emphasize your natural beauty in 2024 as well. It's a new year, new us. We're going to glow up and it's going to be our best year yet. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some useful tips to make this year your most productive one yet, and I'll see you next week. Bye!